Welcome back to the IBSP. Here's your host, Foxy New. Welcome back, fight fans. Welcome back. Let's just dig right into it. Terrence Bud Crawford still knocks out Errol Spence and Sean Showtime Porter. Let's just dig right into it. You know, there's a big misconception going on by the new media fanboys, by the Errol Spence fanboys, by the, you know, biased media. And these guys are coming out stating that Terrence Bud Crawford, because he had some difficulties, because he showed some vulnerabilities against Mean Machine, is that he's, you know, he's vulnerable. He's easy pickings for Errol Spence or Sean Porter. He'll get destroyed. He'd get mauled. He'd get this, he'd get that. So we just want to break it down honestly and objectively as possible. When you look at Terrence Crawford, there's a debate whether he was truly knocked down or not. But I think that's irrelevant at this point, honestly, because Terrence Bud Crawford wasn't critically hurt, wasn't seriously hurt. So whether it was a push or a genuine knockdown, either way you have it, Crawford did take some very good shots. It did stun him. It did apparently hurt him to some degree. But at the end of the day, it wasn't enough to get him out of there. It wasn't enough to put him in serious danger. But it was a lot to wake him up. And he took some very good shots showed that he had a very good and durable chin and a lot of people questioned his chin at the welterweight division a lot of people were looking at mean machines simply because they didn't know him you know as a as, as a bum or a tomato can mean machine is a two-time olympian uh, he's a top 10 ranked fighter and he has a good amount of power for the welterweight division so you respect mean machine for what he is he's not an elite fighter he's not a pound for pound fighter but he's a quality fighter so let's just keep it at that and at the end of the day Terrence Bud Crawford has levels he has different styles he can fight he chose to brawl with this guy and you know you hear people on one end and if you realize if, if we understand that Terrence Bud Crawford could have easily sat on the outside picked apart Mean Machine and won an easily unanimous decision made it look easy he's done it time and time again in the past why would he have not been able to do it this fight he was clearly looking for the knockout he was clearly head hunting and he was clearly brawling to give the fans not only an exciting fight but to get the knockout victory he didn't want to settle for a decision he didn't want to go to the cards he wanted an absolute knockout and he started from round one trying to get it no matter what and you could see it in his eyes that he had nothing but dog in him he was simply looking for the knockout and you know what he dropped me machine three times in the fight and got the knockout he showed that he's a special fighter and he has underrated power literally he's knocked out everyone he's fought in the welterweight division to this point and then you see that you know Terrence Bud Crawford showed against Jeff Horn you know that he can box beautifully never lost a round didn't need a tune-up and destroyed Jeff Horn the same Jeff Horn that mauled Manny Pacquiao the same Jeff Horn that Manny Pacquiao went life and death with in that fight let's be honest and unbiased so if you give Manny credit if you rate Manny high then why wouldn't you do it with Terrence Crawford when he mauled the guy that mauled Manny be honest and unbiased and then you see Terrence Bud Crawford taking on almost a six foot tall Jose Benavides a guy at welterweight division that people say oh he wasn't the same because he was shot in the knee Terrence Crawford was shot in the head what are we talking about Jose Benavides was coming off of two straight wins by knockout Jose Benavides is a top level very good underrated fighter who's never been given his just due another top 10 undefeated fighter with enormous power and a great counter puncher and Terrence Crawford methodically wore him down and stopped him but yet people don't give Terrence Bud Crawford the credit because Terrence Bud Crawford displays boxing skills patience and aggressiveness and top level power and I would say elite level power because you know what he's literally knocking out everyone in the division that he fights and then you see a guy like Errol Spence you know I think he'll beat a guy like Errol Spence because I think Errol Spence power is overrated and overstated at the end of the day if Errol Spence Jr. was the knockout artist that people claim he was why'd he go 12 rounds with Mikey Garcia why do you feel the need to box a guy moving up two weight classes you see Canelo fighting Amir Khan stopped him you know you see Vasil Lomachenko and uh, Guillermo Rigo stopped him you see you know a triple g versus kel brook stopped him if a guy moves up two weight classes he's supposed to get knocked out and and errol spence jr was touted and raved as one of the biggest punchers in the welterweight division yet again he goes the distance with a guy he landed over 300 punches on in mikey garcia and not once was mikey even dropped or significantly hurt 
And then you see Errol Spence Jr. against Sean Porter. Sean Porter was supposed to be blasted out of there. Sean Porter was supposed to be outclassed. Sean Porter was supposed to be man down. And yet Errol Spence Jr. was the one getting rocked. In the whole entire first six rounds, first half of the fight, Errol Spence Jr. wasn't even competitive. Sean Porter was looking dominant, pushing the guy back. You know, you saw how flat-footed Errol Spence Jr. was. You saw how slow his reflexes was. You saw how lethargic his head movement was and how predictive his offensive output was. Errol Spence Jr. didn't look like the truth. He appeared to be the lie. And then you see Errol Spence Jr. got a gift decision over Sean Porter. See, people wanna, don't, don't want to mention this when you mention Errol Spence. They say he's a unified champion. Yes, unified by robbery. The guy didn't legitimately beat Sean Porter. That was clear and utter robbery. You can't lose the first half of a fight. Even Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia were questioning what he was doing the entire first half of that fight. But you know what? Even if you said Errol Spence edged it in a, in a very close fight, even if that's how you felt, you understand that the hype around Errol Spence, he was not supposed to go life and death with Sean Porter. You understand that Keith Thurman won a cleaner victory over Sean Porter than Errol Spence did. And that says a lot. And then you see, you know, you, you see people talk about, well, Errol Spence dropped Sean Porter. Look what he did to Porter. Well, if, if my memory serves correct, Yordini's Ugas dropped Sean Porter and dropped him clean. And many people felt like Ugas was robbed of a decision against Sean Porter. And then you see Adrian Broner drop Sean Porter. And come on now, let's be honest and unbiased. Adrian, the problem, I can't let my hands go. Broner drop Sean Showtime Porter. And, you know, Errol Spence doing it just doesn't mean the same when all of these same guys did it. Sean Porter, at some point, he's always susceptible to get dropped because he's always rushing in for certain shots. And against Bud Crawford, that is going to be a recipe for disaster because I believe Terrence Bud Crawford stops Sean Porter because of that and i also believe that you know bud crawford stops errol spence jr late in that fight if these guys tangle up and mix and this is one of the reasons why errol spence jr is hesitant to fight bud crawford is because errol spence jr didn't like it to the body when sean porter gave it to him to the body Errol Spence Jr. had no plans for him every time that Sean Porter turned him in the fight and was giving an extreme amount of aggression. Errol Spence couldn't handle the aggression. He couldn't handle constantly being turned and he didn't like body shots. Errol Spence Jr. showed a lot of vulnerabilities in that fight, all which Terrence Bud Crawford can exploit and destroy him. But once again, unbiased as always is the IBFP.